to our lab this week was about the three main chemical components of the cells. They are called macromolecules because they're large molecules. They are proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids. And we did chemical tests for all these substances, and we tested them in various foods. In the end, we had an unknown food, and we did the chemical test on our unknown food, and then using a list of ingredients, we attempted to determine what our unknown food was. So the first thing we tested was carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are just sugars, and there's three main types we talked about. Monosaccharides are simple sugars composed of only one sugar ring, like this glucose here. So it has only one ring. Disaccharides are simple sugars, and they've got two sugar rings, like this maltose here. And for simple sugars like monosaccharides and disaccharides, we use a Benedict's test, which is this royal blue chemical. Now, there are also polysaccharides. Polysaccharides have many, many, many sugar rings attached to each other, and starch is an example of polysaccharide. The chemical test for starch we used was Graham's iodine. So, for today, I want you to make sure that you remember all the names of all the reagents, the things they test for, and what a positive or negative test for each one looks like. So if on your midterm exam you have got a test tube there with a chemical in it, and I tell you, say it's a Benedict's test, I want you to be able to tell me that it is a test for simple sugars. Also, I want you to be able to look at the color of the stuff in the tube and tell me if it was a positive or negative test. So make sure you remember that for all of our chemical tests today. Okay, so first off, simple sugars using the Benedict's test. And this is the only one. This is the only one in this lab we had to heat up in the water bath. And of course, Benedict's is blue. So a negative test for Benedict's, like this one, is blue. But if you get any color other than blue, it's a positive test. So this is a negative test. And orange is positive. Uh, green, yellow is positive. Also, reddish is positive. There are other potential positives like brown and so on. So any color other than blue is positive for simple sugars, which is monosaccharides and disaccharides. The next carbohydrate test we did was the Graham's iodine test for starch. And very simple. All we had to do is add some Graham's iodine to the tube. And of course, Graham's iodine is brown or golden yellow in color. So a negative test is just golden yellow in color. And a positive test is black or dark purple. So here's a positive test. So the starch is present. We've got potato chips, and you can see it's turning black where we have the iodine. So the starch is also present in the potato chips. So those are the two carbohydrate tests. Um, after we did a carbohydrate test, we did test for proteins. And remember, Proteins are made of peptides, and peptides are made up of amino acids, and we use the Bayeret's reagent. Okay, so the Bayeret's reagent tests for the presence of proteins. Bayeret's is pretty interesting in that it can distinguish between whole proteins present and also peptides present, because when proteins get digested, they get broken down up into broken down into peptides. So if you get a purple color, it means there's proteins present. If it's more pink in color, it means there's peptides present. It's any other color like green or blue. It's a negative test. So let's see. Take a look at this test. See, it's still blue, so that's a negative test for protein. This is a nice purple color, so it's a positive test. That means there's protein present. Here's milk. You can see it's purplish, so there's protein in the milk. Take a look at this one. You can see it's kind of orangish. Actually, it was pink, and overnight it changed color and became orange. So we're going to assume this is pink. Remember, if it's pink, it means there's protein, excuse me, peptides present. Because we did two exercises with the protein lab. First off, we just had our foods and we tested them. And second, in the incubator, we had a test tube. It was one of these, and I had hydrochloric acid to the tube. I added albumin, which is egg white protein, and also added an enzyme called pepsin. 
enzymes are proteins that speed up chemical reactions, and pepsin in particular speeds up the breakdown of proteins and peptides. So if you just do a test of albumin without digesting it, it turns purple. If you digest it by using the pepsin and the hydrochloric acid, it will turn pink. And we had an incubator, so we had it at body temperature, so it's nice and warm, just like a human stomach. So pepsin and hydrochloric acid kept the body temperature is basically artificial stomach acid. We were able to success successfully imitate digestion of albumin proteins. And we know it worked because the albumin tested pink for peptides rather than purple for proteins. Okay. Next thing we looked at was lipids. So lipids are a group of chemicals that include fats, oils, waxes, and some other things. The major properties of lipids is they do not mix in water. And our first test for lipids was the paper test. It's extremely simple. Sim simple. Just had pieces of brown paper. And we put a drop of water on one as a control. A drop of vegetable oil on the other. Of course, we don't have time to let the whole experiment run. But... At the end of the time, 10 minutes or so, this paper, water on the paper is going to dry up. It's going to look normal. But the, the stain on the brown paper, the oily stain, is not going to dry up, and it's going to stay transparent if you hold this paper up to water. There's a nice transparent stain. So the paper test for lipids just says if there's a lipid present, it's rubbed on brown paper, it'll make a permanent transparent stain on the brown paper rather than one that dries up just like water does. The final test we did for lipids was the Sudan 4 test. Sudan 4 is a red dye, and it's a fat-soluble dye, which means that it prefers to dissolve in lipids rather than in water. So it's kind of a problematic test in some ways, in that if you just put it in aqueous or water solution, the entire solution is going to stain pink. If you put it in a solution of lipid only, the entire solution is going to force stain pink or red. However, if you have a mixture of water and some form of lipid, they're not going to be able to mix with each other. So you're going to have two separate layers. You're going to have a lipid layer on top and a water layer below it. If you have the Sudan 4, the lipid layer is going to stain red. The water layer won't stain red as much. Okay, so all of our solutions we looked at today were mixtures of water with something else. So if there was a lipid present, it should have separated out into two layers. It didn't always, but that's what we expected it to. So, for example, here is just water in Sudan 4. You can see the water is very, very slightly pink. So that's a negative test. And here is an oil water mixture. We had Sudan 4, and you can see that the Sudan 4 is stained very strongly red. The water is only slightly pink, so it's obviously a positive test. And Sudan 4 is preferentially staining our oil. Finally, and most interestingly, we had milk, and I had Sudan 4 and shook it up and let it settle. And you can see that the cream, that is the lipid layers risen to the top of the milk, formed a separate layer. So we have two layers present, and the lipid layer at, uh, at the very top has been stained red with Sudan 4. So some of the chemicals you have to let them sit for a while before the lipid layer will separate up to the top. And it doesn't always happen with milk, but when we're lucky it does. Okay, let's see. Also, we had um, adipose tissue to view. So let's just walk over to the microscope uh, video monitor and take a look at adipose tissue. Okay, so adipose tissue is basically fat tissue in animals or human beings. It's not a great looking slide, unfortunately. But you can see it's got bubble like cells here. And adipose tissue has a couple of important functions in animals. One, it, it keeps animals warm. Uh, so that's why animals that live in, for example, cold water have lots of thick layers of blubber, like whales and walruses and stuff like that. Also, adipose tissue is great for storing energy. Um, so, fat is a terrific way to store energy. So, many animals will store up lots of fat, for example, in adipose tissue for the winter. 
So after we did all these tests, you just ran them. We ran them on an unknown sample, and we looked at the ingredient list of different foods and decided what our unknown food was. So when you're studying this lab, make sure that in addition to everything else, you study the all the chem chemical reagents and their names, and what a positive or negative test for each one looks like. And I have photographs of positive and negative results on Blackboard for you to study.